It's actually happening. The Twitter treasure chest is being blown open by Matt Taibbi here, who has been dropping some real bombs over on Twitter for the last couple of hours. Ammunition courtesy of Elon Musk himself and internal Twitter data and correspondence. This came a couple of hours after Elon announced that he had something explosive to say about the Hunter Biden laptop scandal back in 2020 and Twitter's role in covering it up. Now, we already know from Mark Zuckerberg himself that Facebook did cover up the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. And we now also have unquestionable evidence directly from Twitter's own data and correspondences that they did the same too at a crucial point in the 2020 election. There is even more to this as well. There was uh, quite a lengthy thread, including, quite interestingly enough, the apparent supposition that Jack Dorsey didn't actually know what was going on at his own company. He was not aware of the extent of the censorship taking place under his watch, with apparently his lawyer, that one from the Joe Rogan uh, interview, doing this shit by herself, the uh, Vijaya Gadi woman. That's uh, that's quite the thing, but I'm not going to go through all of it. I am going to let you uh, do that for yourself and form your own opinions. It is on Twitter, of course, right now. And there is also the suggestion that there will be further announcements like this in the future. So I do suggest you uh, go and check out Elon's profile and see what will drop in the future too. For now, we are going to go over the well, the obvious here. These series of tweets prove, again, pretty damn unquestionably, I mean, it's coming directly from Twitter itself, directly from Twitter's data. I don't know <laughs> how much clear it could possibly be made that Twitter has been censoring at specifically and expressly the behest of politicians. Now, this was a tool, officially and properly implemented. There was an expose about this a while ago, which I made a video on, revealing that the government has direct access to these social media platforms to make requests to censor things. This is for both Democrats and Republicans, mind you, and both parties, both uh, Trump's uh, campaign and Biden's campaign, did make use of it, but the Democrats did so way, way, way more. And they also had unofficial access to it as well via personal connections within Twitter. Now, another thing that needs to be, uh, you know, laid out before we go on with the implications here is that there is currently quite a lot of court proceedings going on around this with various allegations that the Biden team has been actively censoring things and has been breaking the law. The Biden team's primary argument in these cases tends to be that they never actually censored anything themselves. They merely asked the social media platforms to do so. <laughs> Which... Theoretically, technically, legalistically speaking, might be true, but uh, when the government asks you for something, <laughs> how uh, how much of a uh, option, shall we say, do you truly have to say no, f you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you figure that one out for yourself as well. So, the general revelation here that Twitter and social media has been censored. Now, Twitter specifically is hardly revolutionary. It is very much so a water is wet statement, in my opinion. This is something that we have known for years, but it is always nice to have the actual hard evidence of it as well. Yeah, it's always nice. But will anything happen because of it? Well, there's the real clue. Again, we've all known it. We've already received uh, quite a lot of evidence, quite a lot of uh, circumstantial evidence and straight up hard evidence, again, pointing you back to the Mark Zuckerberg admittal. Yet nothing has been done, even when the Republicans were in power under Trump. And, well, 
This is one of those questions, isn't it? How do you deal with this? Because this is nothing new. This is absolutely nothing new whatsoever. Politicians have always used the media in whatever form it took at the time to massage the truth, to mislead the public, and to get rid of potentially damaging information. It's been this time since, well, for as long as we've had media, frankly, and social media is no exception to that rule. Now, there is an interesting mention in this uh, long series of tweets here that apparently Twitter was built on the best of intentions, and originally everyone thought they were doing the right thing, but, you know, you started censoring a little bit, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and eventually it simply just became the norm, it became accepted, and so that is what they did until we arrive at today where there are official governmental portals with backends into the platforms to make their censorship requests. Mm. But the only way to change this again is to make it illegal to do this. That needs to be very, very, very clear. Social media's role in the public market needs to be clarified. Because right now, it is a public square in one moment, and then it's not in the next. In the next, we need to be very careful about free speech. Right now, we have a democratic people, for example, suddenly going, oh, 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 Elon can't have all this power by himself. That's dangerous. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, indeed, most assuredly so. Very dangerous. It, uh, it might threaten your ability to censor, after all. Hmm. Yes. What we need is actual legal changes, making it clear that if you are a platform, whether it be social media like Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, you must be a social media platform platform. You must not censor. You, there must be no legal measure for politicians of any stripe or type to move on in and ask for anything to be removed. And if it is to be done, I'm sorry, there's a gnat in my room and I would very much so like to kill it with my bare hands. That's not an incitement of violence, YouTube. It's me trying to kill a bug, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> but, right. It must be illegal for politicians to produce. And if there is to be a thing, like for example, um, let's say there is a genuine case, right? A, pol a politician's phone was hacked and there is the fear of fake emails leaking out. All right, that is a potential concern. In that case, there should be an official declaration on Twitter, on the front page, like a big warning sign sent out to everybody. This and this person is trying to take down this and this material, more news to follow. They should be named and shamed if they do so and then we can go through the legal proceedings as to whether or not that was justifiable. Now, ideally, we would also get rid of most of the speech laws, like the ridiculous hate speech thing that is still on Twitter right now, and to be fair to you, Malone, he can't do anything about that because it's a literal requirement to police hate speech in many countries, even though I do hate it. And obviously, Anyone who did engage in this previously should also be exposed. Their names should be published. They should be dragged through the mud, both Republicans and Democrats, mind you, because this is very, very, very clearly an anti-free speech and, well, it's a tyrannical move. You don't want the government to be telling people what they can and cannot say. Not even if they've made it legal to do so, of course. Whether or not such sweeping legal changes will come, well, that's the big question. What will happen because of all of this? Well, if I am to be honest and pessimistic, I don't think a damn thing will happen because the next big election is still two years away in the US where this actually matters at the moment, at which time a lot of this will honestly probably be straight up forgotten because that is the nature of politics. The midterms are of course recently over, so it can't really do anything there either. The Republican Party could make this a key fighting platform, and they should, absolutely so in my opinion, but, well, there's also that old Norwegian saying, do not set the goat to watch over the oats, because the goat will fucking eat them. <laughs> and asking a politician to remove powers that they currently do have, that really works out particularly well, frankly. Very, very, very rarely. 
Ideally, however, this should be the spur for many of the now populist leaders to rise up and say, okay, you know what? We've now got hard proof. We've got an overwhelming preponderance of evidence. We are going to crush this. Vote for me and I will stamp this out. I will eradicate it, I will make it illegal, I will drag the people who did do it out into the public and name and shame them. You would probably get a massive platform just from that alone. And considering the field of interesting candidates at the moment, it's not entirely impossible. I impossible? Impossible. Whether or not even if they promise it, they will do it. <sighs> Politicians, mm. the only lower creatures on the rank of ethics and virtues tend to be journalists, so um, that's always a question. But yeah, uh, for me, this certainly is a big reveal because it is now actual genuine evidence, but at the same time, I feel like this is going to be another one of those moments where we'll be sitting here going, look, we know you're doing this. We. we we can see it, we have the evidence, and yet in a few months' time, it'll simply be one of those things that happened and didn't really go anywhere. God, I hope I'm wrong. I, I really do. Especially as Elon apparently has more up his sleeve as well. Let us hope that it is even more uh, damaging, frankly. I would love to see the treasure trove of Twitter blown open yet further, because I'm sure there's something very, very juicy buried down deep in all of those communiques and all of those little private planning meetings that the Twitter staff has had over the years. Perhaps even something directly damning. Mm. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But we'll have to wait and see. For now, I do again recommend that you check out Twitter because, well, it's it's gotten a hell of a lot livelier with Elon on it and with revelations like this. It might even have some real serious political um, consequences if for our side's benefit for once. Imagine that. A rarity, to be sure. And furthermore as well, if you ever see anyone on the right ever again saying, oh, <laughs> for benefit of well, and furthermore, if you ever again see anyone on the left claiming that Twitter is benefiting the right wing and has always done so, well, you've got something more to smear their faces with, don't you? Do let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I hope I'm being pessimistic. I really do. Is this as explosive as uh, it kind of appears, do you think? Or will this be yet another thing forgotten in two years' time and no politician is going to pick it up because, well, it's going to affect them poorly as well. And they would like these tools when they potentially get into power. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.